Welcome to MOG Economist. I am Idris and I will be taking you through econometrics for the meantime. So today we will be discussing the multiple linear regression. Um, multiple linear regression. So in one of the videos um, we have made earlier, we discussed um, the simple linear regression where we have just one independent variable and an, an, an independent variable. For instance, in the consumption model, where we have the consumption depending on the income of the consumer, just like we have it here, that's the case of a simple linear regression. Then, the demand of model, quantity demanded, depends on the price of the commodity. It's also an example of the simple linear regression model. Then, our U here is a random error term. So, we will understand that the simple linear regression is often inadequate in practice. What do I mean by this? You agree with me that in reality there are other factors that affect the quantity demanded there are other factors that affect your consumption apart from the income and um, the price in the case of the quantity demanded so there's a need for us to extend the discussion and include other variables in the model so i'll be taking the quantity demand for example the quantity demanded let's say we're looking at the quantity demanded model determined by the price of the commodity, the price of related commodities, then the income of the consumer. So this is the case of a multiple linear regression model. So this will help us explain the demand model better. Then before we also proceed, it is very important I mentioned that there are three types of data one can work with in econometrics. You, uh, you can work with the time series data, you can work with the cross sectional data, you can work with the panel data. Now, what are, what's the difference between or among this um, data set? The time series data is a data set you collect at a particular point like over time over time you collect this data over time probably you're talking about the demand model you collect the quantity demanded from let's say 1999 to 2020 that's the time series data and how we know that okay we're working with a time series data is it comes with a subscript that's t just like the examples I've given here. So anytime you see this, alpha 1 plus alpha 2, pt plus ut, the subscript t is to indicate, okay, you're working with a time series data. Then the cross-sectional data is, you are collecting data on a single variable, or let's say multiple variables, on different, like, at a point in time on different, let's say Nigeria now, we're looking at quantity demanded in Nigeria or GDP in Nigeria. GDP in Nigeria. Then Ghana. And let's say Mali. These three countries. We're looking at, okay, what's the GDP in this country for the year 2020? That's at a particular point in time. So that's the cross-sectional data. And now you know this is it comes with a subscript i pi plus ui that's a cross-sectional data then for the panel data is a combination of the two so we're looking at gdp in nigeria ghana mali from 1999 to 2020. So in this case, you get GDP in Nigeria from 1999 to 2020. You get 
GDP in Ghana, 1999 to 2020, GDP in Mali, 1999 to 2020. Then it comes with the subscript IT. IT. So, we have Now, the idea to say that um, you go up to mind this, I just use this as a notation just to explain to us. So I did that here. So this will come with IT, then IT. So that, those are the three kinds of data you can work with in econometrics. But um, for the sake of this class, I won't be indicating any um, source code. We'll just be working straight because the purpose of this class is to derive the OLS estimators under the multiple linear regression model. So we're going to be working with we're going to be working with an equation y plus beta one at plus beta two at x two plus beta three at x three plus u plus u. Now when we're working with beta 1 at, you are seeing the at here, that is to show that, okay, we have estimated this already. And the beta 1, beta 2, and beta 3 are actually the OLS estimators that we are about to derive the formula for them. So, how do we go about that? The first step is, we make the error term, the U, the subject of the equation. Minus x2 x3 after doing this you will take the sum of the error term that means take the sum of both sides and square them summation u r square y minus the one at you square them now the next step is to take the partial derivative of the sum of square, yeah, the sum of the square of the residual with respect to each of the parameters that beta 1 at beta 2 at and beta 3 at. So we're going to be having partial. Shall be at over beta two and this is what oh, we're going to be having here. So from here we can differentiate this partially with respect to beta one to get the first one to now give two. Then we differentiate whatever we have inside this bracket we have minus one with respect to beta one. Then we have summation y minus beta one at minus beta two at x two x three. Of course, that's going to be two minus one, and that's one. So we don't need to we don't need to write that. So let's write this out. We have minus two. Summation y minus beta 1 at beta 2 at x2 minus beta 3 at x3. Then we know at um, our first derivative, it's always equal to 0. That's the first order condition. So what we differ, divide this by this, we are left with summation y minus beta 1 at minus beta 2 at x2 minus beta 3 at x3 equal to 0. That's for the first um, one. Then for the second one now, we are going to have to differentiate partially with respect to beta 2 at and that will leave us with we bring two forward, then differentiate whatever we have inside this. We are left with minus x2 
you write everything all square. So we're going to have minus two x two summation. Please like and subscribe.